So walau aradu al-khuruja la a'addu lahu uddatan. Walakin but kariha Allah. Allah disliked. Imbi'athahum. They're going forth. Imbi'ath is from ba'intha. Ba'atha. What does ba'atha mean? To send. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ba'atha. Messengers. Right? He sent messengers. So Allah disliked their going. Who's going? The going of these hypocrites. Allah did not want them to go along with the believers. So what happened? Allah didn't even give them tawfiq to plan, to think about going. Who is it that is facilitated to do something? Who? The one who wants to do it. Right? Like for example, you want to do something, you make up your mind, I'm going to do this. And then what happens? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens the ways for you. Right? Sometimes it's a challenge, but eventually you are given the means to do what you want to do. Who is not given that ability? The one who doesn't want to do it. So if they really wanted to go, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have given them the tawfiq, لَأَعَدُّ لَهُ عُدَّةً وَلَكِنْ كَرِهَ اللَّهُمْ بِعَاثَهُمْ Allah did not want them to go because these people did not want to go. And also because if they went along with the believers to the book, then what would they do? What would they do? They would create a lot of mischief. Has it ever happened with you that you're going somewhere and your younger sibling or even older sibling or sometimes even your parents, they don't want to go with you or they don't want to go that place. But you insist that no, come, come, let's go. So they come with you and then what happens while they're there? See, we shouldn't have come. See, I told you. Right? It happens, you beg your dad, can we please go through the drive through I really want a coffee. And he's like, no, no, we're getting late. No, please, please, please. So they're like, okay, fine. And as you get into the queue, you're stuck for a good 15 minutes. And that whole 15 minutes, he's just quiet. Looking down, ignoring you. Why? Because he's upset. Right? So what happens? You eventually get your coffee, but you're like, I wish I hadn't gotten it. Right? Or you enjoy it, but then you're feeling so bad. So the thing is that when somebody is not fully with you, their heart is not fully into something, then even if they come along, they make that trip miserable for you. So the munafiqeen did not wish to go for the battle. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He did not want them to go either. Because if they did, they would have messed up everything for you. So, فَثَبَّطَهُمْ So he kept them back. ثَبَّطَ From ثَبَّطَ To hold back, to prevent, to slow down. So he prevented them. He did not let them go ahead. وَقِيلَ And it was said, أُقْعُدُوا Sit مَعَ الْقَاعِدِينَ With those who sit. Meaning sit back, stay behind in Medina. Don't go with the Prophet ﷺ. Rather you stay behind with those who stay behind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comforts the Prophet ﷺ. It's better that these people did not go. How? That لَوْ خَرَجُوا فِيكُمْ If they had gone out among you, if they had gone out along with you, then what would they do? مَا not زَادُوكُمْ They increased you illa except khabala Confusion. They would not have increased you except in confusion and chaos. خبال is from the root letters خبالان. And خبال is basically such disorder, such imbalance, whether it is physical, like for example, your hand is hurting. This is what? A disorder. It's an imbalance, right? It's something that's not normal. Your hand is hurting. But it is such disorder that affects the mind of a person. So he's not able to think properly anymore. It mentally disturbs him. So the pain is in the hand, the wound is in the hand, but it's depressing. Has it ever happened? That you're sick and that sickness is causing you to become depressed and sad. Have you ever experienced that? Yeah. Sickness making you sad. This is why it is said, خَبَلَ الْحُبُّ عَقْلَهُ Love, it ruined his heart. Meaning that extreme love made him go crazy. Or خَبَلَ الْحُزْنُ عَقْلَهُ That the huzn, the grief, made him lose his mind. It mentally disturbed him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if these people had gone out with you, they would have mentally disturbed you. They would have mentally disturbed you. Imagine, 
you have three little children with you, toddlers, and they haven't napped and they haven't eaten. And you take them out to a restaurant, which is not child friendly. And you sit them down. First of all, they're not sitting. Secondly, they're banging the cutlery everywhere. Thirdly, one of them dropped a cup and now there's glass everywhere. Fourth, they're screaming. They can't wait for the food to come. What's going to happen by the end? You're going to go crazy. They're already crazy, but they're going to make you crazy. You're not going to be able to think straight anymore. Khabal. You know, it's like when you're thinking, your vision becomes blurry and you're like, what am I supposed to do? So people sometimes scream. Or they say, I need a break. I just need five minutes to myself. I need to calm down. So they go to the washroom, take a deep breath, wash their face. And then when they're relaxed, they go back. Ask me. I have two kids. It happens many, many times. Right? Where I tell my husband, are you in a good mood? If you are in a good mood, only then we're going to go. Because I am almost going to lose my patience. Right? So one has to balance out the other. Okay? So... Allah says that if they had gone out with you, مَا زَادُوكُمْ إِلَّا خَبَالًا Imagine how stressful that journey was in itself. And on top of that, if these annoying people who are constantly complaining and creating problems, if they came with you, then what would happen? You know, it's like you might as well do something yourself. Because if you have somebody else helping you, instead of helping you, they might be ruining everything for you. Right? Because some people... They come with sincere intentions. They really want to help you out. But instead of helping you, they create more problems for you. So you're like, please go. I'll just handle this myself. I'd rather do this myself. Okay? So, ma zadukum illa khabala. Just reminds me of something. Family matters. Have you seen it? Family matters? It's an old, old TV show. Steve Urkel? Okay, so what happens? Comes in to help people, and instead of helping, what does he do every time? What does he do? Disturbs everything. So when is peace achieved? When he's gone. Please go away so that we can have peace. Obviously that's not normal, but just giving you an example. So if these hypocrites came along with you, what would they do? مَا زَادُكُمْ إِلَّا خَبَالًا They would have driven you crazy. So it's best that you went out without them. It's best that you went out without them. Because imagine the Prophet ﷺ, he knew that we're already short in numbers. 30,000. The Romans would be much, much more. Alright? Each and every single person was needed and valuable. But what good are those people who are not going to help you? Instead, they're going to create problems for you. So you're better off on your own. مَا زَادُوكُمْ إِلَّا خَبَالًا Allah says, وَلَا أَوْضَعُوا And surely they would have been active. خِلَالَكُمْ Among you. Okay. أَوْضَعُوا From the root letters, وَضَعِينَ وَضَعَ أَوْضَعَ is basically to hurry back and forth. Okay. To participate actively. Okay. So, لَا أَوْضَعُوا خِلَالَكُمْ They would have gone back and forth among you. Spreading what? Rumors. Slander. You know she said this about you. You know he said this about you. You know this is going to happen. You know that's going to happen. So when there are people who are constantly talking like that amongst people, going back and forth, what are they doing? Creating confusion. Creating disunity. وَلَا أَوْضَعُوا خِلَالَكُمْ يَبْغُونَكُمْ Seeking for you. الْفِتْنَةَ The fitna. If they had been among you, they would have created a lot of fitna, a lot of problems. وَفِيكُمْ and also another problem is that amongst you believers are some ma'oon, ones who listen a lot. Lahum to them. To who? To the hypocrites. Meaning they're still weak. And what happens is that they get influenced by what the hypocrites say. They're still weak. In their mind, they don't use their reason much. Whatever they hear from the hypocrites, they just accept it. Some ma'oon lahum. Wallahu alimun bil And Allah is knowing of those people who do wrong. So in other words, the believers are comforted, the Prophet ﷺ is comforted that it's best that these people did not go with you. Because imagine if they had gone with you, this is what they would have done. And history is an evidence to this. لَقَدْ certainly ابْتَغَوُوا They sought. الْفِتْنَةِ The fitna مِنْ قَبْلُ Before. Before also they've created many problems for you. References is being made to the battle of Uhud. Where remember, 
Abdullah bin Ubay, the chief of the hypocrites, he went along with the Prophet ﷺ. But then halfway what happened? He said, you didn't listen to me. So he returned to Medina with 300 people. And when 300 people left, there were some Muslims who thought, maybe we should also go back. And that's what we learn about in the Qur'an. إِذْ هَمَّ الطَّائِفَتَانِ مِنْكُمْ أَنْ تَفْشَلَ They were about to give up their hope also. They were about to go back. Following Abdullah bin Ubay. So Allah says, لَقَدْ بِتَغَوُ الْفِتْنَةَ مِنْ قَبْلُ Before also, they've created problems for you. وَقَلَّبُوا And they upset. قَلَّبَ يُقَلِّبُ تَقْلِيب is to turn something about. From the same root is the word قَلْب. قَلْب is the heart. Because the heart is never the same. It's constantly changing. So قَلَّبُوا They upset. They turned about. They turned over. What? لَكَ for you الْأُمُورُ The matters. Meaning, They have upset your matters before. Everything was fine. And these hypocrites, they said something, they did something. And because of that, the whole plan, the entire plan failed. And this happened many times. That the hypocrites, they created problems for the Muslims. They created problems for the Prophet ﷺ. Many times. So every time they were among the Muslims, instead of benefiting the cause, what did they do? They created problems. Hatta until Jaal Haq, the truth came. Wallahara Amrullah. And the command of Allah became dominant. And what is this referring to? The victory, the conquest of Makkah. Until that happened. And Wahum Karihun, while these hypocrites, they disliked it. Meaning, they hated Islam from the very beginning. They hated the Prophet ﷺ and his cause from the very beginning. And, They tried to upset matters for you many, many times before. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He saved you. He protected you from their plots. And as a result, what happened? The victory came, the conquest came. But these people, they still hate you. They're still among you pretending to be Muslim, but their loyalties are not with you. Allah says, وَمِنْ هُمْ and from them, مَنْ هُوْ يَقُولُ He says, إِئْ then. Give permission, leave for me. He comes to you asking, please allow me. Allow me to do what? To stay behind from the expedition to Tabuk. Please allow me to stay back, to not participate in this expedition. And he says, wala, and please do not. Taftinni, you put me to fitna. Don't put me in temptation, in trial. Because I'm a very weak person and I'm afraid that if I go along with you, then I will fall into sin. I will fall into fitna. What is this referring to? There was a man by the name of Jud bin Qais. And he was also a munafiq, like Abdullah bin Ubay. And it is also said that he was the leader of a tribe. So obviously he was influential. There were many people who followed him, who were impressed by him. Whatever he said, they accepted سَمَّعُونَ لَهُمْ okay. So what happened, this guy, he came to the Prophet ﷺ and he presented an excuse. And it was the lamest excuse that you know any person could come up with. He said, I have heard that the Roman women are very beautiful. That they're very fair, they're blonde, they're very beautiful in their appearance. So I'm afraid that if I go there, I'm going to commit some sin. If I see them, I'm going to commit some sin. What sin is he referring to? Obviously something of sexual nature, right? This is the excuse that he presented. The Prophet ﷺ, he just turned his face away from him. Because imagine if somebody says something so ridiculous to you, what are you going to do? It's disgusting to hear such a thing also. You can't even control yourself this much. You've just heard that they're very beautiful and so you won't be able to control yourself? What are you talking about? What kind of a man are you? وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ ذَلِّي وَلَا تَفْتِنِّي Don't put me into fitna. And he's trying to appear as someone who's so pious and so God-fearing. Don't put me into fitna. I'm afraid I'm going to commit some sin. And you know what? Sometimes shaitan, he puts similar thoughts in our hearts. Don't do this, otherwise you'll do riya. No, 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 no. Don't learn how to recite the Qur'an. Don't memorize the Qur'an. Because, you know what? If you do riya, everything, you're going to go to hellfire. He makes us stay behind from good. Okay? With such reasons, with such explanations. If you do it, you might. 
you might. It's like people say, I don't want to learn because when I will learn, then what if I'm not able to do amal on it? Then I'll be even more responsible. This doesn't mean that we should not have any fears. No, you should have fears and you know your weakness. But if you find one thing difficult to do, there are so many other things that you can do. So, وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولْ إِذَلْ لِي وَلَا تَفْتِنِّي Allah says, Ala Unquestionably, fil fitna In the fitna, سَقَطُوا They have already fallen. They're already committing sin. How? By lying to you. By all this pretense, this show before you. I'm so pious. I'm so holy. Look, I'm so pious. I don't even want to go near the haram. Whereas in reality, you're staying away from Something that is mandatory on you. Allah fil fitnati sakatu wa inna jahannama and indeed the hellfire la muhiyatun bil kafirin. Surely it is one that will encompass the disbelievers. Muhiyata, ihata, hawata. It is going to encircle them, encompass them. They think they will fall into fitna. Well, the real fitna, the real punishment is that of hellfire. With these lame excuses and lies, they're going to end up where? لَمُحِيطَةٌ بِالْكَافِرِينَ They're going to end up in Jahannam. What's the lesson? What do we learn of benefit to ourselves? Yes? That when you have to do something, don't shy away from it. Accept it and do it. And the thing is that once a person makes an excuse, and especially if that is false, a lie, then he has to come up with more lies. Right? Then he has to pretend even more to cover that up, to appear to be sincere. Like Jud bin Qais, he said, I can't go because, you know, I'm very weak when it comes to women. However, if you want any financial help, you know, I can help you with that. He offered financial assistance, but he said, I can't go myself. So many times it happens that we make an excuse one way and we try to make up for it through another way. But it's not going to help. It's not going to work. وَمِنْهُمْ مَنْ يَقُولُ ذَلِّي وَلَا تَفْتِنِّي أَلَا فِي الْفِتْنَةِ سَقَطُوا وَإِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ لَمُحِيطَةٌ بِالْكَافِرِينَ إِنْ تُصِيبَكَ If it reaches you حَسَنَةٌ Some good, تَسُؤْهُمْ It makes them sad. If some good befalls you, meaning you're successful, then what happens? They become really sad. Why do they become sad? Why are they upset? Because they were not with you. Right? Because they made excuses, stayed behind, Alright? And they didn't go. You were victorious. Allah granted you success. So now they're sad. Why are they sad? Because they're not going to have a share of it. Wa in and if tusibaka it reaches you. What? Musibatun. A trial. A test. A difficulty. Meaning some hardship. Failure. If you suffer from that, yaqulu they say, qad in fact, akhadna we took amrana, our matter min qabl before. Meaning, I knew this was going to happen. So I was being careful from before. And see, I saved myself. I didn't go along with the Muslims. وَيَتَوَلَّوْا And they turn away. وَهُمْ فَرِحُونَ While well, they're very happy. They're rejoicing. Very happy about what? That they were not with you when you were suffering. What does this show? That a munafiq, he is not loyal to the Muslims and the cause of Islam. Who is he loyal to? Himself. His benefit. If he get out of something, he's all for it. But if he doesn't get some benefit out of it, then he has no interest in it. Even if he's apparently with those people, he considers himself separate from them. The thing is that when you belong to a group, like for example a family, when you're part of that family, then if someone is happy, you are happy. Why? Because you are part of that family. If someone is sad, then you are sad. Why? Because you are part of that family. If your sister, you know, she is successful in her school, she is getting married, she had a baby, you are equally happy. And if someone is sick, you are equally distressed. Why? Because you're part of them and they're part of you. You belong to them and they belong to you. You are one. You are together. Right? But what happens? Some people, even though they belong to a family, they don't want to be a part of it. So they always consider themselves separate. So what if it's my sister's wedding? What's the big deal? Not my wedding. Why should I be super excited? 
So what if this person passed away? What's the big deal? Everybody has to die anyway one day. Why are people fussing so much over it? Right? They say such harsh statements, such mean statements. Why? Because they don't feel they belong or they have excluded themselves. They have separated themselves from the family. Is it hurtful for the rest of the people of that family? It's very hurtful. When there is a death in the family and this person doesn't have the courtesy to at least offer words of condolence. When there is a reason to be happy in the family and this person is not congratulating the others, is not celebrating with the family. It's very hurtful. Right? So in a group of people also, when people are working together for the same cause, their victories, one person's victory is a victory of the whole group. And one person's failure or weakness or suffering is felt by the entire group. This is unity. Muslims are what? Like one body. So a Muslim can never be like this. That, oh, I wasn't a part of them, so too bad. I didn't get anything out of it. He's not happy for the success of the others. He said, this does not befit a believer. A hypocrite is not loyal. إِن تُصِبَكَ حَسَنَةٌ تَسُؤْهُمْ وَإِن تُصِبَكَ مُصِيبَةٌ يَقُولُوا قَدْ أَخَذْنَا أَمْرَنَا مِنْ قَبْلُ وَيَتَوَلَّوْا وَهُمْ فَرِحُونَ So what does it show? That even if they're apparently with you at certain occasions, it is only to satisfy your eyes. They're not actually with you. Their hearts are not with you. Because if they were with you, that would show from their words. قُلْ say. Say to the hypocrites that لَن يُصِيبَنَا It will never reach us إِلَّا except مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا What Allah has written for us. If we get something, it's because Allah wrote that for us. If we suffer from something, it's because Allah decreed that for us. Anything that happens, good or evil, it happens, why? Because Allah decreed it for us. So, we are happy or we are sad, but at the end of the day, we accept Allah's decree. لَن يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا Because as believers, as Muslims, what do we believe in? Al-Qadr. Right? خَيْرِهِ wa شَرِّهِ We believe that everything is decreed by Allah, the good of it and the bad of it. Both come from Allah. So only what Allah wants will happen. And whatever Allah does not want, can that ever take place? Never. So this belief in Al-Qadr makes a person content and satisfied, no matter what happens. It makes him content. It makes him satisfied, even if he's suffering a lot. It relaxes him. It takes his worries away. It takes the stress away. And it makes him fearless also. Then he doesn't have this fear. What if this happens? What if that happens? No. A person knows this is maktub. It is written. I remember reading in a book about this person who lived in the Arabs for a very long time. And one thing that he was amazed by was this belief in decree that they had. That big sandstorm, their animals dead, their tents ruined, and everything's gone, and now they have to pack up and go elsewhere. And what do they say? Maktub. Maktub. It was written. Move on. Accept it. Move on. Now let's deal with the situation. What can we do? Our problem is something happens and we just sit there and start crying and wailing and complaining. Is that going to solve anything? Never. So have this confidence that لَن يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا So if it happened, Allah willed it. And there must be some wisdom, some benefit behind that. This is why it is said, مَنْ عَلِمَ سِرَّ اللَّهِ فِي الْقَدْرِ هَانَتْ عَلَيْهِ الْمَصَائِبِ That the one who knows the secrets of Allah concerning divine decree, that decree is Allah's secret knowledge, and there is some wisdom behind it, whatever He's decreed, then what happens? هَانَتْ عَلَيْهِ الْمَصَائِبِ Then his hardships become easy for him. The hardships become easy for him. Doesn't mean they go away. They're still there. But it's just easier to deal with them. It's easier to face them. قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا And we expect only good from him. So even if the worst has happened, we hope that inshaAllah there will be something good in it. Because he is our protector. وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ And upon Allah should the believers rely. 
In a hadith in Musnad Ahmad, we learned the Prophet ﷺ said, there is a reality to everything. There is a reality to everything. Meaning once you get to know about something, the more you know it, the more convinced you are of it. Right? And then it's not just some information, but it's a fact for you. Okay? It's a fact for you. It's something that you live by. So there is a reality to everything. And a servant cannot attain the reality of iman. Listen to this attentively. A servant cannot attain the reality of iman. Meaning he cannot know what iman really is. Until he knows that whatever has reached him could not have missed him. And whatever has missed him could never have reached him. When a person understands this reality, believes in this, that what I have received could never have missed it. And whatever I've missed, I could never have attained it. When a person believes in this, then he has experienced iman. Then he has realized what true faith is. Then he has realized the reality of iman. قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ Believers should trust upon Allah. Have faith in Him. If He brought you this far, and yes, you're suffering today, He will take you forward. He will take you out of this problem. He will remove the suffering from you. And even though the suffering has come, inshaAllah, it is worth it. Why? Because there is some good that came out of it. I hope you watched that entire video yesterday. Hmm? What is one of the things that he mentioned? That if this whole thing happened, just so that I could find Islam, it's worth it. It's worth it. You look at the good in the bad also. And when you realize that good, what do you realize? That evil was worth it. And you know what? When you look at everything with this perspective, inshallah there will be some khair in this. Then you can never be disappointed. It gives you confidence, it gives you peace, takes your worries away, and really you can never be disappointed. Assalamualaikum. I'm just remembering when Allah will admit uh, people to Jannah and He'll ask, have you ever faced any like misery, any suffering? And they'll say never, because in comparison, it's like they've never really faced any suffering. And when Allah will admit them, look people to hell and say, have you ever felt any good, anything? And they'll say never. Because the one who accepts Allah's decree, he says, رَضِيتُ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّا وَبِالْإِسْلَامِ دِينَا وَبِمُحَمَّدٍ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ نَبِيَّا Then Allah will make him happy. The one who accepts Allah's decree, then Allah will make him happy. So happy that that person will forget all his worries. And this is something that people experience in this world even. This is why the ulama said that the one who doesn't enter the jannah of this dunya will not be able to enter the jannah of the hereafter. What is the jannah of dunya? That peace and contentment that you feel in your heart despite the worries that surround you. Despite the difficulties that fill your life. That contentment, that khair inshallah. Whatever has happened, there must be something good in it. This reminds me of when, what I heard where um, the Sheikh was trying to just like trying to explain the reasons why there is evil for atheists that say the excuse, oh, there's no God because there's evil. Well, because if there's no evil, if there's no one thing, like God, two opposites, if there's not one, you can't really know the other. If exactly. there's no bitter, you won't know what's sweet. So Things are known by their opposites, right? So even though Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends difficulties in our lives, musibah, the Prophet sallallahu he suffered so much. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he loves a servant, when he intends something good for him, then he tests him. He puts him to difficulty and hardship. So there is always some wisdom behind that hardship. And what is that? Sometimes you appreciate the good even more. You have appreciation for khair. So Allah allowed evil to happen so that you can appreciate good. So قُلْ لَنْ يُصِيبَنَا إِلَّا مَا كَتَبَ اللَّهُ لَنَا هُوَ مَوْلَانَا وَعَلَى اللَّهِ فَلْيَتَوَكَّلِ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ On Allah should the believers trust. Place your trust in Him. Rely on Him. Ya Allah, you decreed this for me. There must be something good in it. Show me that good. 
Give me the ability to embrace it. Give me the ability to benefit from it. Because you know what? Everything that happens, everything that happens, it's actually an opportunity for you to come closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if it's great misery and difficulty. Like for example, Yunus alayhi salam, even though he was in the belly of the fish, and it is said that when he was in the fish, imagine the enzymes of the stomach, what would they be doing? Consuming his body. And it is said that when his flesh was falling apart, he realized that this is not normal, this is not right, something's wrong. And then he begged Allah, لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين. He was in the depth of the darkness of the ocean. And what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought him out. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raised him again. So everything that happens, even if it's the most difficult, as long as you're living, it's an opportunity for you to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's an opportunity for us to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But what happens is that when we start complaining about the negative, the negative, it's so cold, it's still so cold, it's still so cold, then you know what? You can't understand why it's happening. You don't know why Allah has put you in that situation. So when we're in difficulty, first of all accept it and beg Allah, Ya Allah, show me the reason why. Why you decided that this should happen in my life. Like for example, these days we're complaining continuously. Everyone I hear, this winter has been very miserable, has been relentless, has been like this, has been like that. I don't remember a winter like this. Think, why? Why? Think about it. Reflect on your life. Reflect on your state. Why is this happening? And you should know. Beg Allah for forgiveness. Do istighfar. Thank Him for the blessings that He's given you. Assalamualaikum. Just um, one quick point I wanted to mention. Um, if you look at the Prophet ﷺ and all the Sahabas, and if you reflect on their life, and especially um, the journey of Tabuk and all of these things that they faced, part of the reason why their iman was such at a high level because they really believed in the decree of Allah and they had so much tawakkul on Allah. And no matter what happened and no matter what difficulty they faced, it only brought them closer to the conquest of Mecca. Yes. So um, when you really um, think about it, no matter what happens, if you just have that trust on Allah, inshallah ta'ala, that trust will motivate you and it, it, the path of your success will just become that much easier. Yes, very true. So accept the difficulty, embrace it, Focus on the benefit and inshallah you'll come out of it better than you were before. Much better. قُلْ say, هَلْ دُوْ تَرَبَّصُونَ You all wait. Bina for us. O Prophet wasallam, O Muslims, say to the hypocrites that are you just waiting for us? Meaning you are happy when something evil happens, when we fail, when we suffer. You're very happy. And when we get something good, you're not happy about that. هَلْ تَرَبَّصُونَ بِنَا Are you waiting for us? إِلَّا except إِحْدَى One of الْحُسْنَيَيْنِ The two good things. Meaning, the consequence of the believer is always good. Whether something good has happened or something bad has happened. It's always one of two good things. If he fails, even that is good for him. If he wins, that is good for him. How can failure be good for him? Because that will bring him closer to his success. Uhud, the Muslim suffered, but eventually what happened? Victory came. Hunain, the Muslim suffered, but eventually what happened? Victory came. Hypocrites are told basically, you don't need to rejoice over our loss. You don't need to be happy over our difficulty. Because you know what? No matter what happens, it's good for us. It is one of al husnayain the two good things. Didn't the Prophet ﷺ say, amazing is a case of the believer? And it's only true with regards to the believer. If he gets something, then he is grateful and that's good for him. And if he suffers, then he is patient and that is good for him. But this happens only with who? Only with who? The believer. So whether you fail or you pass, you're sick or you're healthy, you get things done or you fail at it, no matter what happens in a believer's life, he gets, he loses, whatever, it's always good for him. Why? Because we learn from our mistakes. There is good in the evil that Allah has decreed. You learn from your failure, what you don't learn from your success. You learn from your mistakes. 
what you don't learn from the things that you've done correct. Right? I'm sure it has happened with you that you did really well on your test and this 0.25 mark you lost because of this mistake that you made. And then you never forget that. So you never repeat that mistake again. Right? So we learn from our mistakes the way we don't learn from our success. The Muslims, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed them to fail at times. At Hunayn, at Uhud. But there was khair in that. There was learning in that. And you know what? If you've learned from your failure, then it wasn't actually a failure. What is it? A learning experience. So, قُلْ هَلْ تَرَبَّصُونَ بِنَا إِلَّا إِحْدَ الْحُسْنَيَيْنَ Why are you happy? If we're suffering, even that is good for us. The Prophet ﷺ said, the example of a mujahid in Allah's cause, and Allah knows better who really strives in his cause, is like a person who fasts and prays continuously. Like a person who fasts and prays continuously. Allah guarantees that he will admit the mujahid in his cause into paradise if he is killed. Otherwise, he will return him to his home safely with rewards and booty. Meaning when a person goes out in the way of Allah, one of two things can happen. Either he will be killed, lose what he brought, and for that suffering, there is reward. Right? Or he will be victorious, he will go back after gaining something. So basically, when a person is out in Allah's way, it's always a win-win situation. You're never losing, never ever losing in Allah's cause. You know in hadith we learn, when a person goes to the masjid, then what happens? For every step he takes, a daraja raised, a sin erased, right? And the whole time that that person spends in waiting for the prayer, the whole time that a person spends in waiting for the prayer. So let's say Isha is at 8 o'clock, somebody leaves their house at 7.30. Then you know what? That half an hour and that 20 minutes of Isha, all of that is as though he is praying. A person is in prayer as long as he is waiting for the prayer. So, a person can never suffer in Allah's cause. Between adhan and salah, sometimes there's literally 15 minutes, and you're waiting, you're like, come on, already, salah. Right? I've been waiting for so long. But you know what? That whole waiting period is what? Written as reward for you. Because you're waiting to do something good. You can never lose. You can never suffer when you're in the way of Allah. Believe me. Even a cent that you spend, even a cut that you have, anything. You're hungry, you're tired, doesn't matter. You're suffering in Allah's cause, doesn't matter. You're not actually suffering. You're gaining. You're gaining. You're always gaining in Allah's way. It's the highest paying job. You know some people, when they work for a certain company, then what happens? They charge them even for the time that they're spending. Right? They charge them by the hour. So if it takes them 15 minutes to get to that workplace, they will put that 15 minutes in their invoice. 15 minutes it took me to get to the workplace. 15 minutes back. Alright? They will charge you for the time they're spending. And you're like, wow, you get paid for even driving to work? Yes, a believer gets paid by Allah for doing anything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That when a person sleeps in the right way, he makes wudu before going to sleep, he remembers Allah until he falls asleep, then you know what? There is an angel who makes dua for the person. Every time a person wakes up in the night, the angel makes dua, Oh Allah, please forgive your servant. He went to bed tahir. He went to bed in a clean state. Please forgive your servant. When a person finishes the prayer and he remains sitting in his spot, as long as he's sitting, the angels make dua, Allahumma ghfir lahu, Allahumma arhamhu, oh Allah forgive him, oh Allah have mercy on him. So a believer can never suffer when he's in the way of Allah. Never at all. Every second, every moment is an investment. وَنَحْنُ and we نَتَرَبَّصُ بِكُمْ We wait for you. And that يُصِيبَكُمُ اللَّهُ Allah will inflict you بِعَذَابٍ with some punishment مِنْ عِنْدِهِ from him أو بِأَيْدِينَ or through our hands. You want evil for us? The thing is, there is nothing that can be evil for the believer. 
Because evil is also good for him. Because he will be rewarded for his patience. But you, have you thought about yourself? The believers are told to say this to the munafiqin. Have you thought about yourself? You want evil for us, but you know what? The way you think about the believers, the way you think about the religion of Allah, don't you realize that Allah's punishment can befall you? Either directly or at the hands of His Prophet? فَتَرَبَّصُوا So go ahead, wait. Wait for evil to befall us. إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ مُتَرَبِّصُونَ Indeed, we are with you, waiting. It's basically a threat. Go ahead, wait. Let's see what happens. And at the end, what happened? The Prophet ﷺ, he was victorious. His companions, they were victorious. And those who opposed him, those who ridiculed them, they were the ones who suffered most at the end. The expedition to the book, what happened was that when the Prophet ﷺ reached the book after a long and difficult journey, then you know what happened? The Romans, they were shocked that they've come all the way here. And they basically decided not to show up. Can you imagine? The Romans decided not to show up. So they just scattered away. They decided not to face the Muslims in battle because they were afraid that, oh, the Muslims came all the way, all the way from Medina over here to fight us. What giants are these? What monsters are these? Like what creatures are these? They're going to finish us. So they were too afraid. They went away. They didn't fight the Muslims. So then you might think, oh, what a fail. The Prophet ﷺ and the Muslims went all the way. No battle, no victory, that's it. No, a great advantage happened. And you know what that was? All those tribes that lived at the border, that were pro-Roman, the Prophet ﷺ made alliances with them. There were small skirmishes. The Prophet ﷺ sent groups of Muslims. And what happened basically was that all of them became pro-Muslim. Many of them accepted Islam and others who didn't they became pro-Muslim. So now basically, the Muslim lands directly touched the Roman lands. They were closer to Romans now. So basically, Islam was now spreading more and more. And it happened by the time that Umar anhu became Khalifa because soon after the expedition to the book, the Prophet ﷺ went for Hajjat al-Wada. And after that, he passed away. Abu Bakr who became Khalifa. He was Khalifa for two years. And after that, Umar who was the Khalifa. When he was the Khalifa, then Rome was conquered. Conquered. So we see that this expedition was basically the beginning, the beginning of the conquests. Right? In the Prophet's life, sallallahu alayhi wasallam, what happened? Makkah was conquered. Arabia fully dominated. And then after that, Islam spread beyond. So what do we see? Everything that happens in a believer's life is good, in one way or the other. So what are we going to do now? Accept it and don't make excuses. I don't want to hear from any group in charge that the people in my group didn't do the lesson because they had this to do or they had that to do. No more excuses. You know, like there are scholars who say, give your excuses up. Black eye. Recitation. وَلَوْ أَرَادُوا الْخُرُوجَ لَأَعَدُّوا لَهُ عُدْ